Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Strabagat Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for Monday, the 23rd of October. So um, we did not have another uh, green Monday. Uh, you know, it's been 14 out of 15 uh, was what the tally was for the SPY uh, to be up on Monday. Again, I'll say that again because it's so odd. Um, 14 out of 15 Mondays um, of the last Mondays have been positive for SPY. Um, not today, though. So it, it'll be 14 out of 16. Um, SPY, SPY uh, gave back a lot of gains in the afternoon. I think at, I think around like 1 o'clock, um, it was up about 40 basis points, and it finished down about two-tenths of a percentage point. So a decent leak lower there uh, in the afternoon. And um, it just doesn't seem like the market really wants to hold on to gains. It seems like... Um, any move up recently is being faded. Um, so again, nothing new, um, you know, no reason to kind of get, ex get excited about the market until it kind of finishes at least strong and, and retakes, um, at least some of the short-term moving averages. Uh, you know, that's why I have those types of things on my charts, just to kind of give me a sense of, um, confirmation that something is changing in the market, right? Because everybody always feels, um, things during the trading session. They think, oh my God, this is great. We're seeing a reversal, but you know, we kind of look at the charts to tell us, are we really actually seeing a change in trend or was just today a little bit of an oversold bounce, um, I think I would go with the latter in this occasion, uh, but regardless, we'll go through some charts. Uh, risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that, that we're going through, of course, is for information purpose only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer right there. So I want to talk about, before we, we go into the overbought, um, discuss, uh, excuse me, not overbought, the, the oversold bounce type uh, um, question to see if we can answer that. Let's talk about bonds because that was a big move today. Um you know, that was a big reversal. Bonds were, you know, when I um, woke up this morning, I saw futures down. And the next thing that I do is look to see where bonds are. And of course, um, yields were moving higher this morning. Well, they reversed and they started to reverse. I know that um, there was a market player out there, Bill Ackman mentioned that he got out of his short position, but bonds were already moving up. Um, I, I don't know the exact time when he tweeted that out, but I, I think around like 8.20 in the morning is where we started to see some strength come into the bond market. So that's neither here nor, nor there. It doesn't matter, you know, um, in terms of what the yields are looking like right now, um, you could see that the yields, right? So it's weird how they how they do this. They put this in green here, but um, the yields were down uh, across, across the board. The two years, 5.06, the 10 years at 4.85, um, the 20 and the 30 are still above uh, 5%, but, you know, a nice move. And, you know, here's where TLT is, right? Um, let's just bring up the 20-year the, uh, history here. So, uh, you know, again, um, was this, uh, you know, we could try to answer this question first in bonds. Was this an oversold bounce? I think it was. Um, notice that we didn't close back above the five period moving average, but you know, for the most part, we're decently below the October value area. So yes, anything is possible, right? We don't go down in a straight line. We don't go up in a straight line either. There's all types of moves. And for now, you know, I, I don't think that we really took back much more. I would like to see um, some follow through tomorrow. Um, don't forget, we've got a lot of bond auctions um, this week, too. Not so much on the really long end of the curve, um, but we do have more bond auctions um, specifically, and I'll show this to you, right? And and all this means is that there's just, there's more supply that's coming on the market. So we get a five-year, um, that's on Wednesday. Um, you know, there's nor normally this is the case of bond auctions, but um, just with, with looking at where the, the price looks so vulnerable, you know, very close to, to the lows, um, we also have the seven-year that comes later in the week too. So you'll get a couple of these. Again, you won't get a 10 year or 20 year bond auction this week, um, but um, you know, we'll see what some of these shorter, uh, these shorter term um, bond auctions, well not shorter term, but like, you know, mid midterm or mid mid uh, 
time frame, I should say. All right, so that's that. And then, then something else that was interesting was that um, the dollar was down about a half a percent today. Um, still not really, uh, you know, still in between the top of the October valuary and this version point of control. So again, you can't really make any major conclusion here. Um, you can say that it was good today to see the dollar uh, move back um, after you know, being in this range for, for a bit. So it's starting to lean lower. Let's talk about um, what everybody seems to be talking about, which is Bitcoin. Um, it, it had a real nice day. And, you know, these moves in Bitcoin can be quite, um, you know, can have some momentum to them. So we took out another VPOC here. So we're getting close to these highs. I see a lot of people getting excited about Bitcoin. Right. Um, I, I just still think it's pretty sideways. Um, you know, it's got some nice momentum to it. Um, has it gotten over where it was in June or in uh, in April? No, it hasn't. Um, so that remains to be seen. But it's a nice move off the, you know, off, you know, what it's done in the last week or so. So let's see if it could stay above this like 31,000, it's called like 31,100. Um, but for now, it's definitely got some momentum. And, you know, things like Coinbase um, had a nice day today, up 3.4%. Um, notice it closed nowhere near the highs of the session. Again, just things are having such a tough time seeing uh, buyers kind of stay with it. You know, look at the overhead supply, version point of control. This is something that we went over in the trading room today. Um, got you know, that was an area to target. It actually went a little bit further above that, but 79.50 was a nice short-term target. I'm going to talk a lot about short-term targets in this um, in this video, but let's talk about the S&P for a minute. So one of the things that I said today while we're looking at a one-hour chart, right, and we were basically been straight down since, um, you know, after Powell spoke uh, on Wednesday, um, Thursday, Friday. Um, so what I want to see is basically, you know, we're so far below this week's value area, which is all the way up at 43.31. You know, that would be a, that would not be, uh, oh, sorry, it, it would be a nice, you know, nice bounce rally to get all the way up there. But, um, you know, when you look at this, you know, this chart right now, one of the things that I said this morning was I would like to see us get out of this channel, right? And we slammed kind of right into the upper bounds of that. And that's the 20-day moving average. And um, and we got rejected by that. So this is not great price action, um, you know, but it's giving traders, active traders, something to do and to kind of play some of these reversals and then possibly fade the strength if you're into that game. But I tweeted this out earlier. I said 42.79, top of value. Um, that was a nice move. I stepped away from my desk for about five minutes and uh, we had this nice move up here, but I looked and I said, hey, that's, you know, that's a place to be selling to taking profits for the day. Um, we talked about getting long um, the uh, uh, the S&P on the break into the value area and that worked and you got to move all the way through the value area. And that's what this market is right now. It's kind of it's barely base hits. If you're looking for anything more than that, you're just going to be disappointed. Um, there's just not a lot of things. Um, I think there, uh, I had this uh, stat up earlier, but I think that there was, um, there's only one name that made a four week new high today, and that was FICO. Um, and I think there's about 140 names that made a new four week low. So it's a pretty nasty market. Um, you know, I, I, I see a lot of people trying to slice it and dice it differently. But, you know, another down day, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of, you know, where where we finish. Now, you, I, you could try to pick your index, I guess, that maybe tells a little bit of a different story, but we could go through more of these charts. Um, so let's go let's go back to the daily chart here for the S&P. Right. Did we retake the five period moving average? Nope. Um, it's almost like a like a doji candle for today. So, uh, you know, I'm open to this getting better. Um, but for now. Um, you know, we're, we're hanging by a thread here and we're going to have a lot more earnings reports that are coming up. I think tomorrow it's Google and Microsoft that report, you know, in terms of big companies that report after the close. And then Wednesday it's meta. So, you know, I think what will be interesting is whether or not, not only can these names beat their earnings and have good guidance, but whether or not people are actually going to buy some of these things, right? A lot of names that we're seeing are, that are beating earnings. And even if their guidance is good, Cadence just reported after the close today and they're down like 10 bucks. Um, they closed at, at 539. 
um, you know, and this has had a nice little check back into the into its 50 day moving average. And look at this thing. It's down, it's down to 220, 228. So even the names, like, because I know people put out stats that say, hey, in the S&P, like, this is how many names beat their earnings or increase their guidance. That's all great. And that's all, you know, nice for, for you know, to talk about at cocktail parties. But um, it's the price action, right? Um, there's too many people that I see on Twitter that are just trying to be right and rather than make any money um because this is not a good price action right this is telling you that um regardless of of companies coming out and saying that they're increasing their guidance now i don't think that they report they had their earnings call but um names are getting hit first before 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 people you know people are shooting first and looking later right because I think this is a good company, um, Cadence. So um, we're we're definitely <laughs> like we're not out of the woods by any means. Let's look at the Qs. They were up today. Did they take back any anything right, in terms of technicals? Nope. Um, here's the five period moving average. The price remains below. Yes, we're kind of hanging on to the uh, to the September lows as well. Um, but we're below, you know, there's nothing to really get excited here. And I, and trust me, I'm, I'm optimistic, right? I look for things that say, okay, this is pretty good, but, um, there's nothing to get excited or be optimistic here about, um, 359.91 is, uh, the bottom of value, which is where we fell through on Friday. And as soon as we try to retest any, any of these overhead levels, price is getting rejected. Right. So, again, you could blame it on a headline or you could blame it on this or that. But I'll tell you, there will also be negative headlines. And when you're through the course of, you know, whatever stage, you know, I don't want to say bear market because that gets people upset. But um, but if you're through if you're getting through a cur like a big correction or a dip, you will find that when there's negative headlines, the market will go up on them. Why? Because the market has priced in the bad news. That's not happening right now. We're still falling on any little headline, right? And um, on anything, you know, we're getting rejected at the simplest, um, uh, at the, at this at the at the very short term, and like you know, some of the easiest resistance. We're not able to get through it. So, you know, um, if you're like me and kind of move to cash at some point uh, or mainly cash or close to all, all cash, you know, you're not, you're not really sweating this market too much. You're kind of waiting for some setups to materialize, but you know, uh, th this to me is not, is not a good setup yet. I have to see price at least get above the five period moving average or get back into the value area, right? Just for confirmation purposes. Like you could go out and you you can make predictions, right? And I see a lot more people trying to do that all of a sudden. I don't really understand why. I think people are um, sticking to, you know, they may have made a prediction a couple of weeks ago and they're trying to stick by it because they don't want to admit that they're wrong. You know, that's very amateurish in terms of trading. Um, but that's what I see people do, you know, and I get that there will be better, um, you know, seasonality improves. And this is supposed to be a strong seasonal week. So if we can't rally on a strong seasonal time period, again, you just kind of have to um, understand that, th that this market is not acting the way it should. I didn't even get to the small caps, but my goodness, look at the small caps down another three, more than three quarters of a percent today. So, um and this is getting pretty pretty darn oversold. At one point, I think the small caps were actually outperforming a little bit, you know, just a little bit. But um, man, this is ugly. And I think it will be very interesting to see whether or not this breaks um, its value area for um, for the year. So, uh, you know, the positives today were, were finally bonds um, bounced. Um, you know, perhaps that might mean something um, a little bit. You know, as we progress through the week, if we get some good earnings, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a tough market right now, and I would say, like, you know, I, I I'm not giving, I never give any advice or recommendations, but um, you know, I, I think just hold on to, you know, my. My personal opinion is I'm holding a lot of cash right now until I see something better, right? Anything could bounce for two hours, by the way, right? 
Um, the fact that nothing can hold is is not good. Um, just a couple of stocks that I thought did pretty good today. But like, here's another one, by the way, right? A another example of stocks not going up on good news, right? So first of all, NVIDIA had a great day today, right? Up 3.8%. That's positive. Is it holding this range? It is. And, you know, this is, uh, it's 419 that this is holding. Um, it will have to get through all this overhead stuff. Um, you know, that's the problem with this and resistance for the week is up at 439, but they had good news out, right? And the good news, it's actually doing okay here after hours. It's actually up a little bit, but they had real good news. They're, they're going to be developing, um, like PC chips, right? So the names that, and by the way, and this is usually the case, right? The names that already are in this space, like an Intel, right? They are falling so much further than, uh, the names that are going to benefit for this, like, you know, NVIDIA went up like, I think a dollar, right? You know, here was this news being, um, being announced. It went up like a dollar 50 on that. So, okay. You know, that's great if you're in NVIDIA, but you're just not getting the same, you know, the, the good news is not, is not being reflective like the bad news is, you know, for example, this stock dropping, you know, a good, a good percentage was down five. Is that right? 5% today or three, per, 3%. I can think that's three, 3%. Um, I can't see the number on the top of my screen, but um, yeah, I mean, we're still, so again, like this is um, the observations that we, that you want to come away with on a day like this is the market rewarding good news or is it still rewarding bad news, right? Is, are we still going down on a little bit of like a, a bad headline? Um, the answer to that is yes. So that's why I think we're not out of the woods in terms of this. I, I think once we hear some, like once you hear that bad news on the tape and the market doesn't go down, then you know that the selling is getting uh, pretty exhausted. But um, for now, pe people are still taking any chance that when we go up a little bit, and they're um, they're selling it off. So tomorrow's another day. Um, we will see if, as more and more companies report earnings, if we start to have, see some names go up on good earnings. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, sorry to take the negative tone, but it's just it is what it is. Um, uh, there's a time to be optimistic and so forth. And and I am mostly, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you you know I'm I'm pretty pretty darn optimistic. But I've got to see some better price action than this. All right, guys, that is it for uh, today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.